welcome everyone. This is going to be a really cool episode because the car is actually starting to look like a car. Now the whole front end is in this picture here, but this episode is part one. We're mainly going to be focusing on the bonnet. You've already seen me in a previous episode make the buck for this. So here we are, we're going to jump into making the mold and then from that making our part and then fitting the part up. So sit back and enjoy, it's going to be a good one. later now I have these two thick layers of glass on here it's all dried nicely which is good you gotta watch out for these nasty sharp bits but it's feeling pretty thick I'm not sure if it's thick enough especially at this end what I'm worried about happening is when I pull it off it'll sort of relax out or you know like the, it's quite flat across there so I'm gonna still try and pop it off and see what happens I don't think I'll break it in any way, but I might have to come and add like a crisscross across there and a piece along the back of like wood or something just to give it a bit more rigidity there. Up here where it's like got compounding curves, I think it'll hold its shape a bit better. And then like this one having this edge here is going to help hold it a bit more rigid. But yeah, the back, I'm pretty sure I'm going to end up doing something with that. So the next step is I'm going to come in and I'm going to cut off uh the extra and sort of trim it i'm going to run the grinder along the front here well below the line of where the bonnet's actually going to finish the bonnet's going to finish up here and it's got an extra quite a lot of material there but what i'm worried is it's some of the as, as i as i worked on this i actually pushed this bit of wood down my little shelf and i think back here some of the fiberglass would have gone down and under which is going to like hook it on i am going to start trying to demold it from that end which means it might pop out but i think i'm just going to go as low as i can with the grinder and score that bottom edge and that will stop it from mechanically hooking in there and fingers crossed this thing comes off out good I've just uh, quickly cleaned out all the release agent and it's looking good I definitely should have put a thicker gel coat on first and probably I think it'll be it's gonna be fine especially with uh, like I said I put a whole lot of wood underneath and fiberglass it on to give it its strength but yeah I probably could have gone a little thicker in some of these corners it'll hold its shape but I would have probably preferred it if it had been a little bit stiffer than that. So I know that for next time. Uh, the mould is good, all apart from just there. There's this real random shrinkage of the gel coat, which is alright. That's going to be really easy to fix before I do the next stage. But the rest of it has come out mint. It feels really smooth and 
I'm just letting it dry off now so I can give it a really good check when I start waxing it for the, the next part. Uh, the mould or the buck has done some funny things. So that has happened after the fact. It's sort of something's reacted there and it, and it hasn't hasn't worked there. But in, in here, and there's a little bit over there. But that hasn't come through in the mould, so that's really nice. The front sort of broke away a bit, which would be easy to fix if I had to. So with that, I'd just strip that off and repaint it. Oh, this still feels like some sort of bodywork already. It's so nice and solid. But I'll probably even never even need this thing again. So now I've got to work out what to do with it. <laughs> it's a pretty big piece to have sitting around. So yeah, I'll work that out. And then I'm going to try and get that sort of in place in there. And fix up that wee bit of bodywork. And then I can guess I can start waxing it up to then make the part into this mold. So that was a huge moment for me. Jake came around as you've seen and we popped it out of the mold. Now it was pretty interesting. It was really quite stuck in the front, but we could crack the back open a bit and then pour water down from the back. And by pouring water down from the back, it breaks down the PVA spray release that we put on there. So you can see in the bottom here, how it's sort of gone um, this greeny color. That's the, the PVA that's dissolved from, from all up there. At one point, I was holding it open, Jake poured it down and, and right down the center we could hear it go <laughs> as it was releasing right down the middle. The um, sides, I next time I would make these flanges a lot longer and finish the fiberglass shorter and then trim it back later because where it was sort of meeting this edge was uh, held quite hard. So that was um, no biggie though, I just worked away at it and eventually it came. Uh, and then once we got all the back, I was a little worried, I thought the front front might be quite hard, but because we had all the back, it just sort of leave it out, and we got it. Now, you would have seen, it's pretty funny, I put some uh, red dye in it to make this thing red so it was a different colour to the mould, but it came out pink, really pink. I think it's even more pink in reality than on the camera. Now, I did have this stuff going on in a few spots and that's due to I didn't leave it long enough between the gel coat and the layout so I thought 
you're meant to leave it until it was tacky but not coming off on your glove. But I'm guessing maybe it was that in some spots, but in some spots it was still a bit wet and it's it's gone and done this. Which is no biggie. I can come back and fill that piece of cake and it's quite sharp so it'll just it'll fill and sand. The rest of it, man, I wish it all turned out like this, because this is so nice and smooth and finished looking. Um, bring it over and sitting it on the car. As you can see, it sort of it fits there good, but what I was really happy with was how well it fits up to this bar here. You can see it sort of matches it the whole way around. Um, so that means that the bends on this bar were right from my model, and then the frame that I made, to, or the buck I made to make this part, that was all cut and made exactly the same. And then even with all the work I had to do to it and everything, it hasn't affected the fact that it fits up to that bar. Because that all those measurements of that have come from the computer. So that's pretty crazy when I think about it. That you know, well, It's nice to know that all that work and it still all lines up. So next step, I'm going to take this outside, trim up the edges, tidy it up. Then I'm going to go and fill those uh, little bits of defect. And then I'm going to try to start working out where I've got to do the cutouts for the shocks. So there's quite a bit of work to do there. Uh, it'll be real rewarding though, and then, uh, then we can look at how I'm going to attach this thing on. So I've got the hood back on with the cutouts and these new bits that I've added here I've just trimmed them up to make it look good now I've got to come and dress all this and make it look tidy it's really hard to pull the bonnet off and then put it back on in the exact same position so what I'm thinking is I need to actually work on the hinges as well get a mounting for it so when I put the bonnet back on each time it lands in the same location so I need to figure that out and then maybe do a bit more of the body work tidying So for the mounting at the top end, I just have these little push buttons, just click and click and then it goes up nicely like this. Now on the underside, in the future I'm probably going to gel coat the underside as well and, and paint it up. So, uh, so I've just taken the bonnet off and what I've done is I've used a rod end in here and that gives me a little bit of adjustment because I can screw it in and out and that whole I actually have a little bit of room to sort of move it side to side as well and that means I can get the bonnet lined up with everything really nice now it's set there at the moment so I hopefully won't have to move them but um, I have the adjustment there if I ever need it anyway it helped me line it up so I also had to obviously weld this bracket here on uh, to locate it and this plate I cut out to stiffen it back same on the other side and that's basically it so with the two fixings up there and the two hinges here and here this thing sits on there really nice and and it does sit down into the guards but we'll dive into that in the next episode
All right, so I'm going to finish part one video just here. As you can see, the bonnet's now all sort of coming together and looking mint. It's uh, pretty cool seeing something that you had in your head for so long, struggling to draw it in the computer and learning a lot, and then finally getting a part. Now, as you would have noticed on this video, I was doing a lot of learning along the way. And hopefully some people that are wanting to do things that are kind of similar can take some of my winners and fails and uh, maybe not have the same fails. Hasn't been too bad, just if you are doing anything like this and this comes to like any sort of project, you can usually work your way around even if you have a problem, you can you can work it out and if you don't, you've, at least you've learned something. So um, just dive in, get it done and thanks for watching. We'll see you soon on the next one.